barrier to feeling empathy. Okay, so that's sort of depressing news. What can we do about it? Is there anything we can do about it? Can we make people more empathic? Well, if we're going to make people more empathic, I think we have to start out by addressing those two barriers I talked about, right? So that first barrier is about self versus other, right? This distinction between you and me. We're separate people. What can we do about that? Well, there's some social psychologists who have this thing called the common in-group identity model. And what they say is, look, there's a basic distinction between me and you, us and them, and it's not just it's us and them, it's me and you. It's, it's usually that me is good, you not so good, right? My religion's good, yours not so much. My culture good, yours not quite so good, right? I'm from Wisconsin, people from Indiana or Illinois, not so good, right? We're from Kentucky, those Tennessee people, not so good. Whenever there's an us and a them, it's them are not as good. That's bad. That's a very difficult thing to, to argue against, to counteract. So instead of fighting against that, we're going to use that to our advantage somehow. Because there's always going to be a me, and there's going to be a you, and we can't change that. But what we can do is get people to think about this differently and focus not on me and you, but instead think of us. Me and you together make an us, right? Us and them together make a we. And if we can get people to focus on the things that we have in common, right? Those Duke fans and the UK fans, you know, I mean, those, they couldn't be more separate, right? But really, we're all basketball fans, right? If I'm a progressive and you're a conservative, it seems like we have nothing in common, but that's not really true. We're still human. Us and the terrorists, what could we have in common? It seems like we have nothing in common. But of course, we have almost everything in common. We're all human, right? We all have the same desires, same needs. Maybe we express them different ways. Maybe we focus on different things. But focusing on the way that we're different is not going to get us anywhere. We've got to focus on the commonalities. That's what's going to help us be more empathic. So that's one, one, one barrier. That's one down, one to go. The other one, uh, the dissimilarity problem, I, I have to admit, is a bigger challenge. I'm not really sure what to do about this. This is a cultural belief that is a very difficult one to combat. What you have to tell someone is, you are not unique. You are not that delicate flower. And that's hard to hear, right? We don't want to hear that. That's an uncomfortable thing for us to hear. So this is a very difficult thing to get across to people. I'm not sure what we can do about this one. But I have a slightly separate idea about what to do. Because what I really think is that empathy is a skill. It's a skill that we are not born with, but we develop. We develop this ability. And if we work on it, we can, turn, we can make this skill more effective. We can get better at it. Like we can get better at lots of things. If we can train our brains to be more creative or be more analytical, critical thinking, if we can focus on our QEP, why can't we focus on empathy as well and develop this skill that we have? So how can we do that? How many people play games on their phone? Maybe I should ask, how many people are playing games on their phone right now? <laughs> A few people. OK, well, all right. My father-in-law is playing games on his phone. That's great. I play games on my phone, too. They're great. I love games on my phone. Angry Birds and Words with Friends. It's fun, right? So what I want to do is I want to develop an app for your phone. And this app, I think, will make you a better perspective taker, make you a better empathizer. How are we going to do it? Well, we're going to use those tasks that I talked about a long time ago, back in that lecture portion of, the, of my talk, right? So here's a website that we created. It's, it's, it's now on the web. We're eventually going to put it onto a, on your phone, so it's going to be mobile. But this is a website that we've developed. So here's a task that we're, we're creating. I'm doing this in collaboration with George Landon, who's in here in the computer science department. I don't, know if, I don't think George is here tonight. But we've had students design the software for us. So here's the task, right? Here's this object. And the question is, which one of these options 
is this object seen from this angle? So is it A, B, or C? C. B, C, what, A, what, come on. How many of you A? How many of you A? B, C. You're all not voting. That's bad. OK, so that's good. So that's easy, right? But we can make it more difficult. Right? We can add more objects. And we can make it a little bit more difficult. So it's harder to do. And we can even add more objects. So it gets even more difficult to do. And so we've just started to create this. We're just running some subjects. My experimenter is right here in the crowd. Adam, thank you for helping me out. He's running all the subjects for this. This is great. And so we've just given you a little bit of evidence for this. The evidence I can, I can show you right now. Here's how many of those uh, trials they get correct. So we have them play this once a day for six days in a row. Looks like they're actually getting a few more right. They're getting better at it. You know, it's not a, not a phenomenal improvement, but it's an improvement. It's going in the right direction. That's, that's sort of encouraging to me. We also have, if we bring people in, we have them do a bunch of stuff at the beginning, and then they go away and do this task, and then they come back and do it at the end. One of the things we have them do is draw an E on their forehead, like you did. And so when they come back after playing this for a week, most people don't change the way they drew the E. They drew the E the same way. But some people do change the E from being sort of the less empathic orientation to the more empathic orientation. And of those people who switch, most of them are in the, the condition where they play the game. There's also a control condition where they don't really play the game. So it seems like playing my, our little game is making people more empathic. Now we're just starting out. We don't have a lot of evidence yet, but I'm sort of encouraged at least a little bit. So that's the first module we've created. We're going to create two more modules. The second one's going to be based on this uh, task that I showed you earlier. Here's how it looks so far. So you know, here are all these images. And if it's got a red thing behind it, that means that there's another people, person. Maybe you're playing with another person at the same time, like you're playing words with friends. And so which, one, which cow can the other person see? Well, they can see this one, but not this one. That's easy, but we can make it more difficult. Adding more objects, having you play with more, more people. And so now there are several people playing at the same time, so it gets a little bit more challenging. And then the third module, the final one that we have in, 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 in development, is going to present people with these little cartoon things about hidden knowledge. Oops, sorry. Um, so this is a little bit further down the road. row. We, we, we need money. Do you want to? Give me some money about this. We're going to ask the government for some money to see if they'll help us pay people to develop this software. So we can put it on your phone. You can play with it in your free time or maybe during your classes. I'm not sure. Uh, but at least this, this game would help you in some way. And maybe you could play against other people. Maybe you can see what your score is. You can compete with your friends, try and get better at it. So we think that this is hopefully going to make people a better empathizer. So that's, that's sort of what I'm working on right now. So I just want to put that aside for a second. And I want you to imagine something. Instead of doing this, let's imagine that instead of making software, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend my time developing a drug, a pill that we can give people. And this drug that we can give people is going to make people less rude and maybe less judgmental of other people when they are rude. And maybe this pill is going to make us uh, a little bit less intolerant of other cultures, understand other cultures a little bit better. Maybe this pill is going to make us maybe less authoritative, but also maybe more understanding of authority and get along better and be able to understand why people do things. And maybe this drug is going to make us uh, less aggressive and uh, more helpful and um, less prejudice. So if I made a drug that did all these things, should we put it in the water? Should we give people vaccinations? Should we force people to do it? To take this drug like the measles vaccination? I don't know if we should do that or not, but I, I bet you if we suggest it, people are going to get mad about it. Well, you can't do that. Wait a minute now. Well, I have good news, actually. The good news is we don't need to do that. We don't need to worry about putting it in the water or giving people shots. Because 
we don't need a drug to do all these things because we all have this ability. You have it. Your friends have it. We all have it. And all we need to do is work on it and get better at walking a mile in other people's shoes. And all of those good things will happen. Thank you.